From Hollywood, California, we bring you Murder on the Oregon Express. Starring Buddy Ebsen as Barnaby Jones. Seems to me that death is simply nature's way of telling you to slow down. <laughs> Special guest star, Peter Falk as Columbo. You happen to see a red oriental book written by, oh, written by, the name's on the tip of my, the tip of my, not the tip of my, no, the tip of my, the of, tongue. Yeah, tongue. Might she tongue? Yeah. <laughs> and pardon me, miss. But if you didn't see it, how do you know who wrote it? I'm gonna hold you. For questioning me? Not necessarily. <laughs> also starring David McKillum as the Invisible Man. Oh. <laughs> Where are? Where are? Where are you? Extra special co-guest star, Raymond Burr as Ironside. Hey there, Sergeant. Huh? You can uh, get me a box of matches. Yeah, I, 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 I say, uh, Mark, do you, do you have any lighter parts? Oh, Chief, I'm the same color all over. Just a minute, uh, my name's Marshall McLeod, and I'm here to tell you this important reserve. You ain't supposed to be here. Uh, would you mind turning that blame thing off? I can't hear myself think with that noise going on over the house. I say, would you mind turning that noise off? I can't. Mind if I join you, Cannon? <laughs> be my guest. Monsieur Hercule Poirot here was just saying that there's no such thing as the perfect crime. It is quite true. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Well, I remember one time in New York, we had a fellow rob a bank, didn't leave no fingerprints nor nothing. He got clean away with over half a million dollars in used notes. On the way to the getaway car, he got mugged. <laughs> Well, uh, we all make mistakes. We sure do. Well, I remember one time I followed a platinum blonde in a long black gown for four blocks before I found out it was a high court judge. <laughs> the case comes up next Friday. Uh, we in Paris, France, Europe, also have a lot of vice and cream. Stealing, robbery, bugglery, ship lofting and pickpocketing. Uh, shop lifting and pickpocketing. <laughs> Not to mention man's laughter. Man's laughter? I said not to mention man's laughter. <laughs> Monsieur Poirot, I must admit, I find your conversation completely resistible. But unfortunately, my stomach is beginning to ask if my throat is cut. <laughs> so if you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll amble along to the dining car. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, pardon me, Sergeant Pepper. Oh, dear. Oh, God, I'm sorry about it. I haven't been so embarrassed since I was with the President's daughter, <laughs> examining her magnificent pair of bristles. Pistols! <laughs> the speaker ran across the White House lawn. Oh, they had to convene a special assize court for him, and <laughs> the thing she said about him... What assize? <laughs> I don't think she said that, though. I wouldn't scare her. <laughs> so I really only wanted a bite, you know. Looks like I'm either going to starve to death or die of ecstasy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about this. I hope you won't hold it against That's me. That's exactly what I am doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It's okay, then. <laughs> the pressure was all mine. <laughs> don't you believe it? <laughs> Remember my old sheriff? He used to say, shoot first and ask questions afterwards. Well, you didn't get many answers that way. <laughs> McLeod, do you realize that while you've been sitting there jawing, the man has been viciously attacked? <laughs>
been shot 14 times, stabbed 17 times! <laughs> Did he have any enemies? Of course! <laughs> he... he had. <laughs> Driver wouldn't keep speeding up and slowing down all the time. <laughs> well, McLeod, you're the only one on duty, officially. Now you just leave everything to me. Don't pull that chair! about a murder? Come on, sweetheart. I'm on vacation, do you mind? Hey, you don't think he had anything to do with it, do you? Hey, Meathead, tell him what's written on the barrel of your gun. It says, uh, 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 hold by the other end. <laughs> what I tell you? Who loves you, baby? You're beautiful. McLeod, why don't you check who went near the victim's compartment? Well, I know who went up that way. I'm gonna shame him into confessing. Like we did back in Little Creek. I'll tell him I know everything. That's why I'm going to tell him. You, uh, you want to see me, McLeod? Cannon, I know everything. You know everything? Yes, Cannon, everything. Well, McLeod, I mean, see it my way. I mean, you were away and your wife was lonely. I was lonely and... Oh, we were sexually attracted to each other because she's a very attractive woman. She's <laughs> big. God, she's big. I mean, Ben and I have to, but you. I'm sorry about that. I couldn't help it. You understand? But don't that be though. You wanted to see me, Marshal? Sergeant Pepper, I know everything. Everything? Yes, Sergeant Pepper, I know everything. Oh, sir, sir, I'm not really immoral. It's just that I can't say no to a man in uniform. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a maniac. At least I don't think I am. It's just that smoking makes me feel sexy. I mean, every time I have a cigarette, I just want to grab the nearest man and tear on my clothes now, off. Now, don't you worry about things. All right, dear Sergeant Pepper, you go to your compartment, sit down, and I'll be along half a in a minute. In the meantime, I can smoke that. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> but I sure as hell am going to. <laughs> you want to see me, McLeod? Barnaby Jones, I know everything. Everything? You know everything? Yes, old timer, I know everything. My son! <laughs> my son! My little baby son! I'll keep them. <laughs> This has been a Quinn Martin, Barton, Harton, Larton, and Fargo production.